Welcome to Guzzler. Hello, everyone listening to this wonderful podcast called the Guzzler Podcast. That was bad. <laughs> no, that <laughs> you, was the best you had, done. You had so many options and you went for that. How are we, gentlemen? Yeah, I'm right. Hot. Yeah, I'm good. I, I hate British, British people. people. This, I know this, this podcast is about British people, isn't it? Is this, this podcast all about Britain? Sorry, spoilers. Yes. Spoilers. I hate it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so oh. No, I, I hate the weather at all as, as well. We'll no, I hate British people. Week. You hate British people. Oh, you, you've gone right. straight in. <laughs> well, without, without any further ado, let's, let's no, go to then. To do let's with go. weather, I'm still on the topic of weather, but like, oh, okay. I saw a thing yesterday and it was like, we should applaud all the British workers out there in this weather. Work. It's like 23 degrees, for crying out loud. Yeah. Gee, it's not I mean, that hot, to guys. Be fair, we, we sound like, we sound ma- pathetic. <laughs> Most of them are working in air conditioning. Like, I just can't believe, like, what, what do we look like to the rest of the world? Pathetic. I remember when my sister worked in Italy, and it was near Christmas, and it was snowing, and they had about a foot of snow, and the trains were still running. We get a, a, a flurry, as they call it on, on RTV News, and we, we shut all transport systems down, mate. motorways are shut. Right. This is what I mean. I just, I hate, I hate us. We have a passion. We're just the worst. But at the same time, I'm also it's really today. hot. Sorry. I can deal with heat, but I don't want the sun. I want the cold and the winter, as we said the other week. I want the cold. The cold's so much better. It is. You get warm, get co- get all snuggly. Put your, I don't know, exactly. what, what is it? Get, get yeah, cosy socks, hot water body. Yeah. I don't know what any of those things are. But. Water body. You can't <laughs> get body. cool in what? the sun. What? No, I just die you, every day for three months. Totally would have said hot water but to boy. get to get warm, all you have to do is put on a pair of shorts. Pardon? That's you don't so put on shorts. You go, I'm, I'm bloody, I'm, I'm bloody cold now. It's lovely. <laughs> That's not true, Declan. It is. It's not. It's just not. Guzzler podcast. Well, so today we're talking about um, some British things. So I wanted to do a podcast actually all about Britain, uh, but I decided against that for now because there's a couple of things that are, that are on topic at the moment that I want to particularly talk about related to Britain. There's five things I want to cover in this podcast. There's five We've fundamental five or British three values, things. isn't there? Is it them? Yeah, yeah the, the five fundamental British values of this week, I'm going to call it. Oh, there are actually five fundamental British values as set out right, by the government. Go ahead, do, do tell. Um, racism, homophobia, <laughs> xenophobia. Actually, kind of the opposite of those, Declan. I'd argue There's democracy. The, the, I'd argue the EDL exists. There's the rule of law. There's tolerance of other religions, and I can't remember the other two. Yeah, we don't we don't do that. Uh, the three most important ones. Our, our democracies are shambles. Nah. So I want to talk about basically. What's the other one? <laughs> this podcast is awful already. Set us up, mate, and then we'll ruin. Right, it. I want to talk about behaviour, education, sport, music. And politics, basically, in, in this in this one 40-minute podcast, which is going to go wonderfully. We'll firstly start with the fact... I can talk about politics now, because I'm leaving teaching, actually. There you go. I'll start with a light-hearted one. And that is that, that because of how we're leaving COVID, we're finally allowed, in some circumstances, to have festivals. And I think that a, a big, I'm going to say, a big British value is music, the club scene, etc. Pubs, particularly. Actually, this week at work, I spoke to a Canadian who's moving back to Canada, and he said the one thing he'll miss about England is the pub atmosphere. The idea you can go in and just chat and have some banter. In Canada, in Canada, they don't have that. They just have like a bar where everyone sits quietly. They don't have this pub <laughs> social atmosphere. I don't, I don't wait, know it's that bad. Wait, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they yeah, got one really pub easy. as well. They got one pub where everyone sits quietly. But I think that's why Irish pubs always do well in foreign countries because that that atmosphere will, is good in other countries. Mm. Track back, Canadia. Yeah, it, it, it's because I, it's because I went to say Canadia instead of Canada. You, and I you said myself, that wrong, and then I just went ahead and said it. Um, yes, yeah, so festivals. Do so anyone actually know any Canadians big... apart from that one guy Louis spoke to? I don't think it's real. Nah, I think Louis made him uh, up for the story. Yeah. So yeah, one of one of one of his name was Mister Canada. Who'd have thought it? Canadians have thought it. aren't real; they're a myth. Um, uh, I know there's a guy that comes into the gym that's Canadian. He might be the same guy. He's in the Navy. Ooh, They're made up like by Navy. Americans to invoke fear, just like the Mexicans. I, I've got, I've got the body of someone who would work in the Navy. Pardon? What is the fish? <laughs> that's horrible. That you don't, you don't work <laughs> in the Navy, though, do you? Really? Um, it's like a I way mean, of I mean, life. I've it? got the body of someone who would wear Navy. That's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> Right, so He's the big festival this year, 
that's allowed to go ahead is Reading and what's the, what's the, what's the other one called? Reading and um, Leeds. <laughs> oh, Leeds. Leeds. Well, it's so easy Leeds. to forget, isn't it? It just is. Yeah, it is. Who yeah. even goes to it's that? It's a Reading festival. Exactly. So why is why are festivals such a big part of British culture? Why do we yearn for festivals? Big piss up. I think it's yeah. Maybe so. I think it's it's rustic, and it's just alcohol filled, and everyone's having a laugh, and nothing can go wrong, can it? I feel not, like not a single thing can go. Wrong. I mean, there was I feel like two you're people died it now. We, we went. <laughs> Where we go again. <laughs> Yeah, you might no, do. Nothing's going wrong. Two we'll be, people die. It'll be on the, but, um, be on the news died when, we went. when something horrific happens to us. And it'll just be uh, that clip of you going, nothing can go wrong. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing <laughs> can go wrong. Our, our, our tent will actually catch fire this time. It's a, to be fair, I it's a big that... tent. I probably won't make it to the exit. Yeah. <laughs> it is large. Oh, there's, there's things that you would do at a festival that you wouldn't do anywhere else in the country, right? Jack off in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't do that anywhere well, else. I'm thinking more that like that when we went, we was all in matching outfits with with face glitter and dyed hair. You're saying like, we, I, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't go up the local doing that. Yeah, we do. But not to that extent. All the time. Well, I suppose we would. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose we would. Maybe that is the the embarrassment of British culture. You wouldn't that, not that, that wash for five days and be fine with it. You wouldn't not wash for five days, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And just be like, oh, this is nice. Or are there? Or, is, or, is Coachella to the, to the same extent as no. what like Glastonbury or Reading no. and Leeds? No. Why? Because it's all like it's just like fake, isn't it? It's like Anderson America. It's like glammed up glitz. It's not like actually like British people. You go to a festival, you get covered in mud, you shit in a field, and you cry. Americans <laughs> don't have that. No, I, I suppose that's a very good point. It's, Whenever you see photos of Coachella, yeah, it is clean. When you see photos of Coachella, everyone's really glam. The glitter, it all looks really, really lovely. It looks like they're glamping almost. But yeah, you see a photo of a British festival, and it, 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 I, it looks I, like hell on earth. Yeah, and it is. I it want should to be. come home. I want to come home after a festival, get in the shower, and the bathtub be black with the mud and the crap I agree. coming off of me. That, right? I just want to have a good time and don't give up about anything else. That relief right? you want. Well. Apologies, apologies for the swear word, but you want it you know to be I mean? horrific, don't you? You do want yeah. it to be horrific. But when we it's, went to it's, Reading two oh, years ago, yeah. we walked what felt like about ten miles oh, to, to, to the, to the campsite. Like that, yeah, holding a ten-man tent in arm with like forty beers. Oh, it was liters and liters of alcohol. Experience from life. Between the three of us, we then got into the festival and we thought that we were we were set, and we had to walk another three miles to find an empty space to put I'd, a ten man tent. I'd like to point out as well that I'm Deck saying that was bad. I'm I'm looking at Deck right now. He's topless. Um, he's he's got bulging biceps. He's a very very fit man. I'm five foot eleven overweight. Uh, and yeah, it was bad. It was a bad experience. Yeah, it was, it, it was a horrendous experience. Like the the tent bag was cutting into my hands. It was just awful. Yeah, it was, it was terrible. It was one of the worst things ever. But the relief of getting there, it's almost worth it, isn't it? Setting your yeah, tent to up, be fair, getting your chair out, that, that, falling through it. That first, <laughs> that first tinny when we just sat there, it was that was amazing. It's the act- that's what I mean. The relief. Yes. So. When we went, some of the things that stood out was the fact that it, at night time it went from boiling hot, when I was sweating, I couldn't breathe, the dust was awful, to feeling like I'd just escaped cold it's Like it was it was horrifically cold, I almost died several yeah, times. The, it was like the Night King from yes. Game of Thrones had just come along. On the bad. first Stabbed night, in the chest. I genuinely Horrific. lay there thinking that I was going to die. You forgot your sleeping yeah. bag, didn't you, you silly... You... I did forget Louis' sleeping bag. And some some people would argue that the kind thing to do would give him mine, because I forgot his, but no. <laughs> so, do you think that the, the, the price of Reading tickets, or festival tickets in general, is worth the, worth what it is? Yeah. When you compare it to, like, when you look at how much music you see, how much actual live music you get for your buck, it's insane. Unless you're one of those guys... I'm still very angry at these people that stood outside the bar where there's just speakers and they were just playing some like dance tunes outside a pub in in Reading Festival. So there's live music everywhere. Luxury. Yeah. Which which in in an hour's time, Loud Luxury are on. And they're just like stood there with their drinks just like shaking. What's wrong with you? Because they're all high. Yeah. yeah. They probably thought, they probably go home and said, yeah, yeah, I saw her live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Didn't know where they were. Glastonbury... It's got the record for the, the biggest Greenfield music festival. And in 1970, when it started, there was only 1,500 people went to Glastonbury. And tickets were £1. 
not bad, is it? Really? When yeah. was that? In 2017, they were 230. 2017, we it was only a quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, they're 230 pounds in 2017, which, to be honest, I don't think is that much, bearing in mind Glastonbury is considered one of the most famous, well, probably the most fam- famous music festival in the world. And only 230 pounds. Yeah. Did you catch the virtual one a couple of weeks I ago? I seen a couple of clips. I saw, I saw some Coldplay clips. So I, I went to watch it. None of the links were working, right? right? Like, none of them. So Glastonbury just ended up giving it out for free. Oh, really? Yeah, it was on Twitter. They just went, yeah, have this. No one can get on. <laughs> nice. Fair enough. So what is it about pubs, then, that the British people love? Um, I don't know. It is bordering on, like, crazy, though, isn't it? How much British people love pubs. Yeah. Like, do you, you, the Euros are on next week. The Euros start next week. And all of it got in my head, right? Tomorrow, yeah. Well, yeah. Is let's sit the pub and watch it. That's all. I hate football. I, I love but football. I just, I just want the atmosphere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we went up there to watch um, World Cup. So while we're on football, then. Oh, we're talking about football now. Go on. I was, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to link. I was going to count. I think the it, reason that people like the pub so much is it's that social atmosphere. I think there's there's two areas to, to British culture, and that is that you can sit in your garden with a barbecue, or like having like a, a wine or a cocktail or a pims out on your lawn in a summer's evening, or you're in a pub getting absolutely shite faced. Like so what, it, what it's do, one or the other. What do other countries do? They go to um, bars, don't they? They have quite a sheen, bars. and there's there's some music playing. There's maybe a little dance floor in the corner, um, yeah. and they just do like cocktails and light drinks. But there's nothing like a hearthy pub, no. a cold pint, and you're just shouting at your mates for four hours. And people will just buy like buy, buy shorts, like I'll oh, have a whiskey, please, and then they go and play pool, and that's that's the bar atmosphere, and like especially in like uh, some like. Sort of southern states of America, like the, the whole dive bar scene where it's just like you sit around the table almost in silence when no one has that British bar feel <coughs> or a pub feel, there's, British pub where, feel. where there's music playing and everyone's shouting at each other because <laughs> no one can hear it because the music's that yeah. loud. That's that's it, isn't it? It's just yeah. brilliant. When you when you queue up at the bar for ages and some knobhead walks straight to the front and gets served first, we, we ain't got that. That's yet. it. Lovely, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And and then you've got it plays like some like Cotton Eye Joe on the the radio Venga boys. And everyone goes absolutely Venga no boys. absolutely mental <laughs> Venga boys everyone leaves because Louis put it on yeah, the jukebox yeah. the other thing is that sports is a big thing in Britain particularly I'm going to start with these ones cricket people is like it? cricket I've never met anyone why. that likes cricket I'll be honest it's, my granddad it's an, my, it's an, my granddad loves never cricket met. it's an image of Britain uh, tennis, people like Wimbledon. Yeah, um, love tennis. 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 Golf, people like golf. But the big one, and rugby, no. I suppose, as well. People like rugby. The big one yeah, is football. Yeah, mate, big fan. So, th- th- like we said, the Euros start, well, I suppose, last Friday when this podcast comes out. And, and especially with the World Cup and the Euros, no matter if you like football or not, the whole of England clubs together for that. And no matter every. In, 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 the, th- in the three years, or, or the two years outside of the World Cup and the Euros, everyone goes. England are the worst team in the world. We're we're awful. Why? What? What's the point? And then it gets to like the three month period. Everyone goes, it's coming. Yeah, I don't know it's why coming. that happens because we are bad. I think we just get excited that pub culture is going to happen and we're all going to band together. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because we we expect not to get past the group stages, and a good eight out of ten times we get past the group stages. We have a world class squad. We should. Our squad's insane. Yeah, yeah. But but we get like, past the group stages and then suddenly we're like, well. We're going to win. And then we always expect not to get past the group stages again. And we do. And then, instead of going, we'll take one step at a time, we go, we're going to win. We're going to win. In the World Cup a few years ago, we were going to win. We, we were we going to win. ever going to win. We didn't play a good team <laughs> once. We played Belgium in the group <laughs> stage. We lost. We just I, done penalties from Hurricane. What gets me is, like, especially our generation and a little bit younger, we're getting like increasingly more unpatriotic. Like, I'm aggressively unpatriotic. Yeah, I'm not patriotic at all. I, but, I hate inter- I don't like international football, I'll be honest. I'm not a fan at all. I like but football. when the Euros and the World Cup is on, I'm from mental. <laughs> My whole personality changes, and I'm like, it's going to happen. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. ever. And I know it doesn't, but 
it's just culture, isn't it? Yeah. But I feel like if there's one time when you can all club together to do that, I think it is those those times. I like, mean, if we went to another I war, I'd argue, I'd, I'd probably be a bit more like trying to bring the country together. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Do you think so? Uh, I, I don't know. It depends who's in the wrong. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Don't If we just declared war for no reason, then we'd be like, come on, England. Come on, have them. <laughs> we'll win this. Yeah. Well... I suppose so. Nonetheless, ninety six was a big year. It's always mentioned as the as the year it's, in which we it's because we we hosted, we hosted it. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And it was it was a big year for us that year. Yeah, we've got the golden squad. Now, who who have we got this year? Who who could possibly be comparable to, to that to that of legends? I remember around two thousand and four when our England squad was something was was totally something else with Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, um, Ashley Carr, we've never, Beckham, we've never won it. Yeah, I didn't think we'd ever won Euro. Um, this this is this is another golden generation. You got Foden, Sterling, I, I, I Sancho. Also, I agree. I think that this will be compared Greenwood. to those of about two thousand three. Grealish, I really like Grealish, but it's a Loftus memorable cheek. squad. It's a memorable and same with the, the World Cup squad. It's a memorable squad. All the years in between, I saw a couple of England matches in between two thousand nine, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven at Wembley, and I can't remember the squad that was playing. Defoe, Beckham, and Rooney, Defoe, Heskey, but like it uh, yeah, was that like, says it all, doesn't it? Exactly. They're not. They're not Even, particularly. They're a couple of names, but they're not a memorable it, squad. Two thousand four. Now these are memorable squads, aren't they? They are memorable yeah. squads. Kane, Jordan what, Henderson. One, <coughs> one second. I've just looked at the winners and runners up for the Euros, like since it started. The Soviet Union and Greece has won the Euros, but we haven't. Excellent. Yugoslavia has been runners up twice. We haven't. Oh. Well, you know, right. we've never made it to a final. Nineteen ninety six was that good? Because we're not very good, mate. Well, maybe this year is the year it's coming home. I don't nope. know. Who well, do you think will win? Every, every uh, like international match is we're coming home. It's coming. Home. Frank Skinner done that song with David Baddiel, didn't he? David Baddiel. That's weird. That's, <laughs> I think that's really what weird. What a strange, strange outcome. Yeah. And every every time that comes on, they're just, they're raking it in just from singing. It's coming, yeah, you know. But you, but but you scream it every time you listen to it, don't you? Hmm. Oh, no one knows the other words. It's just well, I hate football fans. That was made for 1996 for you, as I think, wasn't Three it? Three lines on the shirt. I love football. But I hate football fans. It's uh, horrible. Uh, dreaming. Now, that song's alright, Declan, but like it ain't got the he hasn't got the jam. Imagine like walking down the street. Yeah, you can't walk down the street going three lines on a chair. <laughs> but you can go stop it's me dreaming. Pathetic. Yeah, first. So the other big thing this week, yeah. aside from the Euros, is the uh, is the G seven. Which is being yeah. held in Cornwall. Some which always annoys me. And it, like a G six. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's the end of this week's podcast, everyone. I just we'll, say, is uh, it, is we'll it like a week. G6? Or is it something else? No. Um, no, I I eat G7 and all that sort of bollocks. Why? It, they never do anything. They just talk about the problems that we face and then never come up with a solution. It's just a load of bollocks. It's just a way to waste money for no reason. They could have had a phone call and done exactly the same job. Boris Johnson has flown from London to Cornwall for an environmental summit. What a <laughs> moron. Yeah. There was a lovely picture today, Thursday the 10th of June, uh, in which there was um, Boris's missus and Biden's missus, and they had Boris's little boy on the beach, and they were like playing with him. It was a really nice picture of like, two two places uh, like sort of coming together over that little thing. However, <laughs> Boris's kid, you only saw the back of his head, his hair's mental. He ain't very old. <laughs> His hair is mental. In what way? Blonde yeah, curls. He's like a he's like a like a Greek gladiator. He's blonde curls. He looks like Jason and the Argonauts. All these blonde curls going down his back. Yeah, but to be fair, he's a kid. And Boris, Boris's hair is fine until he's in public. He purposely yeah, he, he, messes yeah. his hair up. Yeah. It's smart. So G seven. Do you know who's part of G seven? Uh, Japan, Canada, Large, us. biggest seven countries. America. US. Yeah. Did I say Canada? I said France. Canada. Didn't I? You got two more. What have France, I said? Three more. Germany. France, Germany, and one more. Oh, we've done it all. We've done it all. Canada, got, France, Germany, said... Italy, Japan, China, yeah. us. No. Uh, so yeah, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, UK, and USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it used to be the G8. Who was the eighth? It wasn't China. Uh, Maldives. <sighs> Maldives. It was Maldives. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be um, weird, though, wouldn't it? I'm sure it was. It would be weird. No, it was. We just... It was. Uh, 
Spain? The, it was Russia until Russia. 2014. And it was due to like their thing with Crimea. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So they, they got rid of them. Um, but then, this is weird, so that's the seventh most richest, the seven richest countries. There's also the G20, which is held yearly. Yeah. Why not? Why are you not? Why are you doing G seven? That's that's like you've got a big WhatsApp group, a WhatsApp group between everyone, and they've they've got the seven rich. We'll, we'll make our own. We'll make our own, and then it's like a little splinter group. What's the point? Just just all do it in the G twenty. Imagine if they get the, the G twenty and and China pipes up and they go. I'll tell you what we can do about the environment. And Bryce and they go. Sorry, mate. We, we've already dealt with this in the, in the G seven, mate. We, we're, yeah, but we're, them, we're, them, we're doing this. Them seven countries hold more economic influence and like half of the others don't they so they put them together just because they're going to make more difference than the other countries but the thing is they need to throw China and India in there now because they're as equally economically um, I think it probably will get substantial. bigger and eventually, eventually it will just end up being the G20 that's what, that's what will happen eventually you'll have Nigeria and mm. stuff in there and it will <clears> just be the G20 G197 yeah I mean, but nice. but it annoys me because they don't actually get anything done. They just talk for a while and leave. What do you want them to do? Actually, make some stuff, make some pledges, start on actions, that sort of shit. They talk about they six. Talk. They talk about six things in particular. What are the six things they talk about? Do you know? Uh, Environment, wars, um, climate change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, talk about economy. the mass singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Economies. Total wipeout. Um, Human rights. So they talk about the big, the big six are security, yeah. climate change, trade, poverty, and gender equality. I assume trading is they talk about like you know collectibles, like uh, TCGs, um, they... back and gone that sort of thing, and they just sort of back yeah. and forth. I'm assuming they're going to talk about Rona this time as well. Who? Rona. Um, oh, he said running. I thought like, oh, they're all big running things. Good old Boris. Nah, mate, didn't bring it up. And they talk about where the MCU's going to go. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would, yeah. Maybe they should um, be up for a little chin. Uh, uh, to be fair, with how little they actually get done, they probably do. Yeah, exa- yeah exactly. So it's in Cornwall this year, and uh, loads, of the pe- loads of locals um, got informed about a lot of the changes that was going to happen. So they've got all the all the war boats and stuff out in the uh, in the bays around Cornwall, and a bloke went to pick up his, his lobster uh, what are they called? Lobster net boxes, trap. fishing boxes, whatever. Yeah, yeah, lobster traps. traps. Yeah, lobster trap. And they said, "Sorry, mate, you can't go any further than this." He's like, "I've got to pick up my my traps." And he said, "No, you can't get any nearer to the shore." He's like, "That's my business. That's my livelihood." He's like, "Sorry, mate." And he ha- he had to go home, and he couldn't make any money that day. He couldn't pick up his lobster boxes. He wasn't allowed any nearer to the to the thing. Also, this other bloke, he had a long driveway, and he tried to reverse out his drive, and was like, "Excuse me, mate, there's a car parked there." He's like, "Sorry, that's." Like a government car, we, we can't move it. He's like, you've parked over my drive. And it's like, can't move it. And, and sorry. And he's like, how do I get to work? And it's like, sorry. Yeah. They really, they really do just care about the the everyday man, don't they? They really mm. do. And he was fuming. He's on the news, and I was like fuming, they like really, really, really angry. And you would, you would be, to be fair. They're there for us. Like, That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying they care yeah. for Boris, us. Boris, Boris flied from London to Cornwall. Flew on a <laughs> private plane. What I was, a I was fucking like, was it moron. Flight? Flew, yeah. What an idiot. A... He, he's at a climate change summit and he flew. Do you drink a lot of Red from Bull? From London to Cornwall. <laughs> Gives you wings. What on earth is this? I don't know, mate. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I, I ain't Boris. Honestly, Ask him. if it was my choice, Guy Fawkes should have won. Should have won. Guido, Guido should have done it. His, his name's not even Guy, it's Ian, isn't it? He, yeah. he should have just done it and got rid of him. He was trying, to be fair. I, I really like would love him. to be there in, in the 17th century when when people when people met Guy Fawkes and uh, they went, oh, what's your name? And he was like, Guy, Guido. And I was like, oh, really, what's your real name? Ian. <laughs> I'd, I'd love that. I'd I don't think he that. would have said that. Um, no, he, he would. You can't not. Give me give me some ideas of what you would expect from a school. What do you think genuinely? What should happen in a school? Well, if you, if you was looking for a place for your child to go to a school, you near. All right, that'd be nice. Near what? Pedophiles. Near where I live. <laughs> near where yes, I live. So yeah. Sure specific. <laughs> so yeah. Um, that's it really. As long as it's close. 
Um, yeah. And they take. I'm, 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 I'm glad I said we're going to do the, we're going to do the funny answers. In I'm a um, <laughs> my, my joke answer was racial homogeneity, but. Uh, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So man. I don't know. Just you'd want them to be fair. You'd want them to be safe. You'd want a good record. Um, good nice, teachers. Nice Ofsteds. You know, it's safe. Yeah. You've got a, yeah. A good relationship with the parents. You'd want all of the yeah, the important things. Yeah. You want important good things word of mouth. to be hidden away. Excellent. And possibly a small one, but you'd want detentions to be in like a safe place. You wouldn't want it to be in some random place. Yeah, but so be, if my kid's been naughty though. Yeah, but you wouldn't want it in like a. And then they're like, we're gonna we, we now run we now run detentions down by the river under the bridge where the uh, you know where those guys hang out and the the cars yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we only do it after no. eight at night. Hang, hang on. Yeah. No, nah, if my kid's been naughty, it's not up to the school with discipline. I, I'm gonna put him in a chokehold, like. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. So the other week okay. I was in uh, I was in Primark and in Primark they have all the all the wonderful tops. You know Primark's not Disney related, like princess related. I was they're, just about to say that. They're, they're like all about Stranger Things or Star Wars and stuff like that. And there was this there was this top that said it was a maroon coloured and it said life is better in Hogwarts. And I immediately saw that and genuinely the first thing that came to mind is well that's crap because it wasn't was it? It genuinely wasn't. I, I turned to my, I turned to my partner and said like that's that's not true. She said, what do you mean it's not true? I was like, Hogwarts wasn't good. Like, surely if Ofsted came, they would have surely shut the school down. At no point would a parent go, Phew, my, my, school, my child's in there five years. A lot of bad things have happened in that school. It must be quality. Like, people say that Hogwarts is a grand school. I wrote down some, some a few things happened in that school in the five years in which, Harry, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you know him, he's a student who went there, Harry Potter. Um, he went there. And a few of the things happened when he was there. So they organise houses um, by the type of person you are and separate you almost entirely. Dumbledore hired uh, a disguised Death Eater, a Death Eater's friend, a clueless novelist, Voldemort in in someone else's body, a werewolf even. He, there, there were snakes, giant snakes I'll say, just, just roaming the pipes. There was Dementors which were sucking the soul out of the pupils. Uh, in the third year, he was in year nine. He was meant to choose his options that year, and there was Dementors sucking the soul out of the of the students. There was a dark forest where they ran detentions, where unicorns just died, and there was dangerous centaurs. It was haunted. Lots of ghosts lived there. Um, the caretaker tortured the children. There was deadly weapons which they carried on them at all times. Um, they also had intersex dormitories, which no one kept an eye on at all. Also, there wasn't a lot of sexual activity involved in in the Harry Potter films, which was quite surprising. Not enough. Um, That's why I gave up the series. There was Quidditch, which is which is quite dangerous, and also, well, two there's the giants turned up, and also, in the final year, year eleven, I don't know if the children are prepared for this, but it turned into a battlefield. So I reckon at some point Ofsted probably should have shut this place down. The thing, do you not I, agree? I've never even thought about school Hogwarts before. To be honest with you, but in the whole, you know, they do like their lessons are like potions and mm. stuff. Do they not do English and maths? I you, I no. just thought that when you said that <coughs> that some of these wizards don't. Yeah, so these Probably. wizards don't even do uh, wizard-related jobs. They just go work in a bank. Yeah, in which exactly. case they should do maths and English. They yeah. haven't done any maths yeah. or English. How? No. How? How? How's Hermione talking like such a posh little? She don't even do any English. Yeah, yeah. I Does can't help them out that... and think about the fact that, that all the things I just named, and you took the fact that they didn't do maths and English. There. So. Well, yeah, maths is yeah, maths maths is my heart. If I was a parent and. My child comes out after being there for a year, and they go, "How was it?" And they go, "This real dark lord, especially if I'm if I'm a Muggle parents, and they go, this dark lord sort of was in the school all year, hiding someone else's body. We also had a giant roaming around the school. Next year though, we've got Dementors uh, standing in place. Oh, what Dementors? They suck the soul out of, out of children. Also, I had a detention once. I had to go into the dark forest where these killer centaurs. Not too much attention there. Nah, hang on. Your child wouldn't come back after a year there. They'd be dead. Yeah. Right. There, there was literally in in the books. There's a ghost named Peeves, right? Yeah. Peeves the poltergeist. He just annoys people, right? So you, you immediately Peeves. turn up and Peeves you get infested by a ghost, and then that's how it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a big schlong snake in the pipes that will probably eat you, especially if you're a muggle. Um, your your child will be mud blood, so they're dead. Uh, then you've got the mermaids in the lake that just want to drown anyone that goes near it there's the the fact that they give children like literal children magic that could quite easily kill themselves with yeah. the restricted section right 
where Voldemort got all of his ideas for the Horcruxes in, right? Literally tells him to just murder people and he'll be invincible. It's just in the restricted section. There's nothing preventing an 11-year-old child walking in and going, oh, I could live forever. Quite easily. Yeah. It just goes in. Why are there no locks? Nothing. Like, nah. I let the kid, oh, let's kids. Let's kids. You're off to Hogwarts. Hang on. Let's not even talk about the Triwizard Tournament All where right. they not. have to fight a dragon, <laughs> yeah. go in some enchanted maze, you know, pretty much drown. It's mental. Film, Your child isn't coming back. But Send them there. I'll dare you. With all due respect, I would still rather my kids go to Hogwarts than some Oxford uh, Ofsted special measure school in the centre of Birmingham. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, to be fair. That's all because, I'm saying. because you're you're less likely to die or be killed in Hogwarts. Despite Metal all detectors of it. on doors. I, I don't know, mate. I ain't, I ain't at school for me. They portray... Uh, I mean, the, the headmaster literally killed his sister. That's the first place to start. Um... And then they portray him as some like all omnipotent being or all knowing. In the he, he just hired morons every yeah, exactly, single yeah. year. Every like he every he year Harry was there, person. he was in danger. Yeah, no, he was bad at it. He didn't screen him yeah. well. Uh, at some point, Oster should have turned up and gone. You know, this this place really isn't suitable to be to be having children. Even not even just come here, but live here. This isn't the right yeah, place. We're going to shut you If Hofstede turned up, Dumbledore could just obliviate them. If they, they um, um, and maybe that's what happened. Maybe they turn up every single year and they just keep getting the memory wiped. Yeah, and they keep going back and going. We were supposed to go there 15 years ago. Why has no one been yet? And then they go, and then the next year, 16 years has been that no one's been there. Why has no one been? And then yeah, maybe is, is it Harry's aunt and uncle that look after him? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe they weren't that bad. Maybe they just didn't want him to go to, to Hogwarts, which is, as we've yeah. just no, said, like hell on earth. They actually weren't that bad. Harry was a Horcrux, so he was like corrupting them over the years mm. and making them like evil. Because then yeah. there's a deleted there's a deleted scene <coughs> in the last film. I ain't um, seen the last film. When that, um, or the second to last one, where he sends them off because he reckons that Voldemort's going to find them and kill them. So he sends them off and they all hug him. Oh, nice. um, and it was the fact that he'd spent so much time away from them that they'd been like allowed to heal from yeah. the Horcrux dark magic wow I didn't know that well, on that note then I'm going to bring us to the to the, to the fifth and final point small point about behaviour of the, of, the, of the British people and that is that last week when I was coming down the motorway I noticed a shoe on the side of the road a little while later, I was walking through town, I saw that there was two shoes with a laces tied over a, uh, a telephone wire. And what I really want to know is, where is that one person with one shoe, and how did that shoe end up down the motorway? <sighs> Genuine question. How did that happen? Did her dad go, maybe it was a child, I don't know. Did her dad go, I've had enough of you, I'll throw a shoe out. Or did she go, I'm going to throw my shoe out. Lol, pants, throw her shoe out. She's now just got one shoe. Was Ooh, it a girl's shoe? shoe like, given? It was, it was, it was like a pink one white trainer. Yeah. Was it big? Yeah, size seven, maybe. I think that. They, I'm I going past the same now. some people having a laugh, wasn't it? Yeah, but now she's got one shoe, and I'm wondering what, what happened to her. What was the conversation in the really... car when she was like, well, I've got one shoe now? Like, I, I could see us driving somewhere and me just lobbing one of your shoes. Like, it'd be funny, wouldn't it? No. I think it'd be, I'd be pissing myself. <laughs> and the other thing is that, like, when they tie the shoelace together and throw them over a telephone wire. That's weird. How how long does that take? Like, you're not going to do it in one in one hit. Maybe. Like, they've sat there for ages just doing, nah. it, doing it. And then when they've done it. Nah, perf- perfectly. First time, well, mate, every time. When they've done it, though, do they go, I haven't got no shoes now. I've got, to, I've got to walk home. And also, I've never seen someone get shoes down from there. Where do they go? I've got two theories, right? One is someone's walking to charity shop to get rid of some shoes, and then they get halfway and they just feel, oh, I can't be arsed. They get them mm. out, and they <laughs> and they just throw the shoes, right, and hope no one notices. Right. That's theory one. Theory two is actually a sad one, and there's some guy out there, and he's like Banksy, right? And he, he's been going around the country throwing uh. shoes, and he thought, everyone's going to know that no one's just doing this. They're going to know that it's like some guy as an art statement, and then over the years, just no one's brought it up, and he's, he's seething. He's absolutely fuming. He's like, I've I've thrown 
five pairs of shoes a day over telephone line. How has no one brought it up? How is it not in the papers? No one's mentioned so it. How, right? uh, how can he afford so many shoes? He's, he's banks. He also gets them from a charity shop. <laughs> right. He banks it, that's it, yeah. Do you know what he gets it from the side of the Mike. road? There is some yeah, wires. He goes on the motorway, gets them, ties them together, <laughs> throws them. These should, no, I never see anyone take them down. They vanish into thin air. The, the issue is that whenever they, they get they? thrown over a thing, they just vanish, which is which is an absolute phenomenon no, they on don't. itself. What is the chances yes, that you got, do. like what is right, Louis? What is the period of time that these things are on those lines? You think quite long I don't know, because no, quite I don't long. Know, yes. How yeah. long would it take to get one down? Would you say? Four, five hours. <laughs> really? <laughs> Probably not very long, right? So no, the yeah, probability yeah, of you seeing them up there is quite high because they're there for a long period of time. The probability of you seeing the one guy just quickly go and get them off is quite small. Right, no, yeah. they might not. They might not even go and get them either. The laces just might deteriorate after a while and snap. Oh, no, yeah, I thought guy. you were going to say our feet. I thought there's you were going to say that like they, they they like they just like disintegrate. They fade away over time. Like there's definitely got. I thought that's why you asked how long they're up there. Like the council. What like. out of existence? Like the, the council just trying to avoid actual meaningful it's, jobs probably they probably sent like all five of their guys no one, there from the day it's a mystery that no one knows the answer to and it's, it's, it's one of those natural phenomenons that we'll never know we'll never it's know not. what happens with the councillors they'll get there there's five of them and they'll just look up for about four hours and go how are we going to get this down <laughs> sounds believable doesn't it yeah because they, they, they don't want to fix a pothole about yeah. two o'clock in the afternoon they'll think ladder <laughs> and then they'll come back the next day with the ladder. I don't hold the counts in high regard. So yeah, probably. Maybe it's crows. 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 You, you ever looked in a crow's nest? It's full of shoes, mate. Or maybe they get another pair of shoes and they, they try and throw it to knock the other one out. And they miss and it goes around a different set of telephone. That's yeah, how they... And sometimes, what, someone yeah, did it definitely. once and all the others have just been uh, someone else trying to get them on. down. Yeah. <laughs> they just keep yeah. missing. Yeah, attempts. That's, that yeah. makes more sense, actually, doesn't it? I still think it's the uh-huh. Banksy guy, and if you're out there, I, I see you. You're not, you're not yeah. anonymous anymore. We recognise you. Only he doesn't actually see you because no one's ever seen you before, and that's the issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come Cambridge and do one, and then we can communicate. Right, and Declan, what are you drinking tonight? Um, I was actually. Do you remember a, a few months back? I was drinking CEO, mm. and there was a really fancy, um, like cork oh yeah yeah well i'm drinking yes. the, the the red version a ceo uh mencia it's barizo grape i believe um it hasn't got a description it's just a historical duck place it's uh 39 percent and it it weren't weren't bad actually to be fair it's a dry red um it's quite sweet um it's just a standard red. I mean, I reckon you can get better reds for cheaper, but if you want to give it a go, I'm, I wouldn't not recommend it. Nice. What about you, Nafi? I feel like I feel like Deck made and wrote on this can. <clears throat> we are. Wait, what? You felt like what? I feel like the description. I feel like I imagine Deck saying it. Oh, I'm. I'm we're, we're what we're drinking is is House of Pale, which which sounds like Lucy's Game of Thrones house. Um. <laughs> <laughs> which make, yeah, House of Pale. It's a nice can, minimalistic. Minimalistic. Which is nice. Yep, and it, the description is uh, light, crispy, and beautifully fresh. This is the, in capital letters, pale ale to get your full body juicy fix. It's at the top two, and then it's an over cross for an I. Is that to you? Is that? It says it's brewed in Denmark. It says, it says, to owl. Owl. To owl. Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Oh, this podcast going down now. <laughs> this, this, is, this is two pant, I which can't. is very interesting. To owl. <laughs> it just says owl. To owl. I'll just read that as oi. Yeah, to oi. Yeah, two pant. She gets some money, didn't which you? Which is recycle it. Yes, it's like two pounds, this can. Nice. Uh, it's 5.5%. Don't know if that's what it means. Uh, I, 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 quite, I quite like it. It was it was a fine pale owl. Yeah, it's alright, wasn't it? Well, actually, away. a good pale right. owl, I'd argue. Not, not good, but it was good. That's alright. It was a I'll it was it, a pale it, ale. I'll give it a two point seven five or a three, but that sounds negative. But I don't mean it to be negative. Denmark beer. Where did we get this one? Denmark. Oh yeah, shit. No, I don't know. It was from a. It was from a. It was from a box. Yeah, we had a Denmark box. No, we haven't. Which is strange. Yeah. Oh no, it was from it was from your new your next favorite brewery. Ah, 
That ain't my next favourite brewery, but no. Nice. So next week, um, yeah. I believe it is my Declan. Declan's. Yeah, I want to see yeah. if he get there. He didn't. Yeah, we doing Dex? Uh, we're doing mammals. We're going to finish off the animal series. Uh, I feel like before it's just we're back right together. Before right? we, okay. yeah, right. b- before we get stuff. back together. Yeah. Cool, we'll check uh, it yeah, out. So. That final one where we've where we got mammals, that'd be excellent. It's got to be better than cool. fish. I've... I thought fish were a bit boring as a as a collective. I was really looking forward to Yeah, we, we, didn't, we didn't talk about octopodes. They enough. need to step up their game. Mm-hmm. I just thought there'd be a lot of interesting facts because it's underwater and they're all a bit yeah. mysterious, it? but they don't really do much. No. no. They just kind of eat and... and piss from their eyes. That was it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Just a bit... It was a bit boring, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Well, do right. check in next week. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast. Have a wonderful week. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye. Thank you for listening to this Guzzler podcast. <laughs>